Nityanandam. Hi, this is my Nitya Ovyananda. Today, I want to talk about inner awakening and kundalini awakening. Many people are very interested in kundalini. What is it? What does it do for you? Is it a bad thing? And many people, unfortunately, who are trying to make people still stay in the powerless space in life, and heaven forbid any kind of mystical thing happens, it must be the devil's work. Uh, so there's those people saying and creating bad press, bad publicity, I can say, about kundalini. But they have it all wrong. Kundalini is an energy that exists in every single human being. Everybody, even the atheist people, everybody has kundalini. It exists in the base of the spine, in your muldahara chakra. When awakened, she goes through a process of moving up through the shushuma nadi, all the way up until she reaches the crown, the crown chakra, sahasrara chakra. And when that happens, enlightenment happens. So basically the whole process of kundalini rising up in you, she's cleaning out your various energy centers. You know there's a seven major energy centers in the body. There's actually tons of energy centers, but seven major ones that, that is more commonly known. So those are the ones that run your basic organs and your uh, brain and heart and all those things are basically in conjunction with those. So she needs to clean those out so that she has a clear path to move upward. That's her only, her only uh, life's purpose is Shakti is to, supposed to meet Shiva up here. So her life's purpose is wanting to move up and clear out your system to move to the top so she can reach Shiva and that union happens and enlightenment happens. Uh, that's how you can describe it. So this Kundalini energy is in the base of your spine and it has to be, she has to be awakened in order to do her work. But in most times, unfortunately, she remains dormant. There's many different practices you can do to awaken Kundalini. You can do different yoga, pranayama. If you read Hatha Yoga Pratipika, that book is an ancient book and text that uh, describe different ways you can awaken Kundalini. But, you know, and there's many scriptures that talk about Kundalini. Um, I have a verse here from Shiva Samhita that I will share with you, just describing Kundalini. Kundalini. The Shishuma also embraces it. And the beautiful seat is there. There it is resting, shining brilliantly like the autumnal moon with the luminosity of millions of suns and the coolness of millions of moons. The goddess Tripura Bhairavi has these three, fire, sun, and moon, taken together. And collectively, collectively she is called the Vija. It is also known as the great energy. So in many of the ancient Hindu scriptures, they describe in very much beautiful detail and poetic detail like this, very descriptive. Sanskrit is a beautiful language. Anyhow, uh, describing Kundalini and what she is. Basically, the whole purpose of yoga, yoga asanas, is to move the energy because different asanas compress the body or expand the body in various ways or causes air to go into various parts of the body so that those blockages and energy can move and circulate, the body circulates. So you get, of course, the flexibility and strength and the kundalini energy. Those three make a healthy yogic body. Flexibility, strength, and kundalini energy. Kundalini energy can make things manifest in your life, happen in your life. When you have a kundalini awakening, you can actually use that energy, work with that energy, work with her in that oneness space to make things happen in your life, connecting to her. So, how, though, is the kundalini energy awakened? I told you about some various methods in the Hatha Yoga Paripika. However, that could take you many decades for that to happen. However, today we are very fortunate, lucky, fortunate, I don't even have enough good words, to have a living avatar, an avatar, the enlightened master of all, His Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda. He awakens our kundalini, and through various methods he uses to awaken the kundalini. Basically, he can just awaken it like that, and that's what happened with me. So I'm not sure if maybe that's a past life thing or what for me. Um, but for many people, they they have to have a master awaken their kundalini. Now, my kundalini was awakened during a two-way video conferencing program. So Swamiji was in India, and I was in Ohio, USA. And I know that I had a kundalini awakening based on various uh, things that happened in the body and the feeling of that energy awakening in me.
And she actually helped me get through a lot of tough times. When I first uh, started seeking and I met Swamiji, it was very difficult because my whole lifestyle was just changing so rapidly. You know, I, becoming fully vegetarian, taking vows, you know, of um, uh, taking the sacred thread, taking those vows to be a vegetarian, to not have that lifestyle anymore of drinking or going out and being with those people. All those things, like, just went away from my life. I didn't want them, but it, there was still that uh, kind of a little bit of pain, that identity that I was living with. And, and you come through a lot of doubts with that because you live one way your whole life, and then suddenly you're doing a 180. How does that happen? Because something inside me, I know, was awakened. Some gift was awakened by Swamiji. And because of Kundalini Shakti, I quit drinking. I quit all those bad habits I was doing. And all of a sudden, I began to look in and realize, wow, there's definitely something more in life. As I thought, I just didn't find it. I didn't know where to look. All the religions I looked at didn't show me anything. So I thought, okay, maybe when I die, I'll find these things out. But when that was awakened in me, when she was awakened in me, it really helped me. Because whenever I went through some doubts, like, am I doing the right thing? When my energy and ego is getting pulled by my old life, I would just stop for a moment and look in and feel her there. I can feel my Kundalini energy. I can feel her inside me, guiding me. And so that really is an amazing gift to have her helping you through your spiritual seeking. Because it's not an easy path. It's very easy to get diverted into other things. But what I want to tell you is, you have to have a guide, you have to have a master, a legitimate true guru to help you with your Kundalini awakening. Because now there's these people who speak negative about Kundalini, okay? So if they awaken it themselves through some way or sometimes something happens if you go through an accident or some trauma, she'll get awakened and things like that can happen. But she can make a lot of wrong turns, you know. If, if you have a Kundalini awakening and you stick with your lifestyle, you know, if you're into drugs or drinking or you know, eating non-veg food, it really has a detrimental effect on your system. Honestly, it does. It's not like we're a bunch of goody two-shoes here trying to tell you to, oh, don't do those sinful things. I don't care about this sinful thing. I don't believe in any of that. I just know what's healthy for my body now, what's healthy to keep my energy going. I don't care what you do, but if you want to live a spiritual life of seeking and you want to have a kundalini awakening and you want to have a energy in your body to start to move and expand and a flowering to happen, you need to give up those things because they're just no good for you. They'll make you go goofy. Honestly, so this is why people have such a bad rap, like they, why they give it this name. Kundalini is such a name. Uh, it's very wrong information, so don't get fooled by that stuff. Anyhow, so the Kundalini can be awakened by Swamiji, our Guru. Swamiji, His Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda. He is such an energy force. Like I said, my Kundalini was awakened through to a video conferencing. So imagine when you meet him in real life. He can just sit there in one session and awaken everyone's Kundalini. And that's it. And the thing is, it's not only just awakening your Kundalini, but guiding you. Swamiji can look at any being, and he does. He guides the Kundalini. So if she's hitting on a certain point that opens up, and maybe you can't handle it, or whatever karma is there, who knows? He, he guides her in such a way that it will be healthy for you and right for you. You'll have to go through the things you have to go through and complete those things and be free of those things and heal. But he'll guide you in such a beautiful way, in such a loving, gentle, compassionate way. And that is what you need. You definitely need to have that. So if you have any interest in seeking a higher space, a higher state spiritually in your life, Kundalini is really the only way because without Kundalini, you really can't do much. Then you're just praying out of some book. And what is that? Nothing. Anyone can do that. But actually experiencing life, the energy that lives inside you, it is your right to experience that. It is just as it is your right to see or breathe or your heart to pump the, ener the blood through your body. Kundalini is a necessity for you, for your life. So please understand this. And you have to come to Inner Awakening so you can sit with Swamiji. He can awaken your kundalini, and he can get you on the right track in your spiritual path. He will be your guide. And believe it or not, when you go back to whatever country you're from, he will still be with you, guiding you. Isn't that beautiful? So you don't even have to worry about it. You just go inside and you speak to him, and you connect to your kundalini energy. And when you're trying to do something or work through something, you will see how beautiful it is. So whatever you decide to do after that, 
Swamiji will still be your guide. So it's not only three weeks of spending, but your whole life. Once he initiates you, he takes you into his heart, into his womb, like a mother. And he embraces you and holds you and guides you through your path. It is his duty to make sure you get enlightened. So don't wait another life. Come now to Inner Awakening and have that experience happen to you. So go to innerawakening.org and find out the next dates for Inner Awakening and attend. Attend immediately and you will see things happen beautifully in your life. Things will manifest beautifully in your life just as you want it, just as you dream. Thanks again for watching another video. Nityanamam.